In every professional sport, the goal is to win as many games as possible and fight for a chance to compete for a title in the playoffs. But from my point of view, winning seems to impact the way players are viewed in the NBA more so than ever. Basketball fans can, to put it nicely, be a bit overreactionary when the playoffs come around and the idea of recency bias is undoubtedly a common thing amongst the group, so if you make an impact in the playoffs, you more often than not get rated more than those on losing teams, and for the most part, this is a reasonable viewpoint to have. However, some players are just flat out unlucky with the situations that they're in, which brings us to the topic of today's video. Today, we'll be discussing five players in particular who in recent years have found themselves on teams that just aren't very good around them, which is out of their control completely, and as a result, they haven't been able to win many games. These are players that can absolutely be impact players on teams that want to seriously compete, but because of a bit of bad luck, they just can't. Before we get started though, it turns out about 76% of you watching aren't even subscribed to the channel, so please, if you enjoy the content, consider hitting the subscribe button, because not only does it help out a ton, but I would also very much appreciate it. Now with that being said, let's begin. The first player we'll be discussing that has been trapped in a bad situation ever since he was drafted is Devin Booker of the Phoenix Suns. Ever since Steve Nash left the franchise, the Suns have been struggling to make any legitimate progress towards regrouping and getting back to contention. Despite finding the absolute gem of a draft pick that Devin Booker was back in 2015, they followed it up by botching some of their following selections, taking guys like Marquise Chris, Dragon Bender, and Josh Jackson over several all-star caliber players from those draft classes. As a result, in Booker's first four seasons with the team, the most wins in a season they got was a measly 24, always finishing near the bottom of the standings. In this time, Booker has been developing into one of the very best scorers in the entire league, with his scoring average increasing every season he's been in the NBA, and it reaching a highly impressive 27 points per game this past year. Offensively, Booker has everything you could want from a modern day shooting guard, as he's capable of taking over ball handling duties, can create his own offense against any matchup, is one of the best tough shot makers in the league, his ability to play make for others has also steadily improved with each passing season, and most importantly, he's shown countless times that when the game is close down the stretch, he has the it factor where he can take a game over and hit clutch shots, as he has several buzzer beaters in his resume already. Back in 2018, Devin Booker vowed that he was done missing the playoffs, yet since then, the Suns have still yet to make a playoff appearance, despite him doing everything in his power to get them there. In the bubble, the Suns put on an amazing performance and were on the verge of pulling off the impossible and sneaking in, but they came up just short. Hopefully that momentum can transfer into next season and the Suns can finally take that leap because Booker definitely deserves to show what he can do in the playoffs. And if they don't give him the help he needs, he very well might request a trade. The next player we'll be discussing who has found himself in a situation that doesn't seem to match up with the goals he has as an individual is Drew Holiday of the New Orleans Pelicans. Holiday is very often labeled as one of the most underrated players in the entire league, and honestly, I couldn't agree more with that sentiment. Throughout the majority of Anthony Davis's tenure with the Pelicans, people would often attribute his lack of any real success to the fact that he didn't have any help, but Drew Holiday is a damn good second option for a team, and he way too many times got written off in that span. Last year with the Pelicans, they had to deal with the entire drama of Davis wanting out, which definitely affected the team's play on the court. And then this year, Drew found himself playing alongside a bunch of young up-and-comers who definitely all have big-time potential, but they just aren't quite at the point where they can be ready to compete for anything meaningful right now. Drew is 30 years old now, right in the middle of his prime, with not much much time left to capitalize on his best years as a player, so being in a situation surrounded by youngsters definitely isn't the most ideal thing in the world for him and to have to play with. There have been rumors of contenders showing interest in him in the trade market this summer, so this offseason will be certainly something to monitor as we go, because his ability to play lockdown defense while also being someone that can give you 20 points and 7 assists per game with ease is something 
something any team would love to have. The next player we'll be discussing that isn't exactly in the best situation for where they're at in their careers right now is Kevin Love of the Cleveland Cavaliers. Love was obviously with the team at the peak of their glory days, playing alongside LeBron James and Kyrie Irving, making four straight finals appearances, and during those runs, he was an all-star and an excellent third option for a team competing at the highest level. With both LeBron and Kyrie gone now though, he's been on a rebuilding Cavs team that for each of the last two seasons has been in the basement of the standings, and there's no indication that spell is coming to an end anytime soon, with their focus shifting now, going all in on the youth movement and planning for the future. Love is a stretch big fitting perfectly into the modern role of the position, and he's still capable of putting up big numbers, having just averaged 18 points and 10 rebounds per game last year, and most impressively, he made about 38% of his threes on pretty high volume, taking 7 per game. His best days are obviously behind him, but plenty of teams could still use a third option that produces at that level, and he's shown that he's more than willing to sacrifice individually for the better of the team and their success. The next player we'll be discussing stuck in a losing situation is Carl Anthony Towns of the Minnesota Timberwolves. Towns is one of the most, if not the most, to offensively talented big man in the entire NBA, with a skill set we really haven't ever seen before. He's one of the best shooters in the whole league, making 41% of his threes on almost 8 attempts per game, and he does it as a 7-footer that can also dominate opponents in the post down low, and take slower matchups off the dribble, and take them to the basket with his good ball handling ability. His offensive package is truly unmatched, and his production of 27 points and 11 rebounds per game last year back that up, but the Timberwolves have only managed to make the playoffs one time in the five years that he's been there, and that was the season that Jimmy Butler was in town. The team's decision making has definitely been questionable at times, investing heavily into Andrew Wiggins and missing on draft picks like Chris Dunn. They now have a decent ball handler and shot creator to pair him with in D'Angelo Russell, which is something that the team desperately needed, but even still, I wouldn't be taking any bets on them being a playoff team next year. And finally, the last player that we'll be discussing that has unfortunately found himself in a losing situation is Bradley Beal of the Washington Wizards. The Wizards used to be a perennial playoff team year in and year out in the early parts of his career while playing alongside John Wall at his best, but ever since injuries have begun to plague Wall, the team has faltered. In the same time frame, Beal has actually emerged as a genuine star player, playing his best basketball over the last two seasons. But but at the same time, the Wizards missed the playoffs in each of the last two years. Beal is coming off of a season where he averaged over 30 points per game, and his name has been on the rumor mill forever because of how well he would fit into a team that wants to contend, but that trade just has not come yet. With Wall returning this year, the team very well might return to the playoffs, but at the same time, the supporting cast outside of those two is still quite poor, and Wall's production is a complete mystery because we just don't know how good he'll be after the injuries. And with that being said, that's all I have for you today. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below any other players you think fit this category. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.